second part of uh, the cumulative test number three, I mean party number three, study guide. Go to number 22. Number 22. Focus, please. Here we go. So it says, solve and graph. Okay, here we go. Solve and graph. So first thing we need to do is solve. Line down the equal sign. And then the question that you need to ask, is there anything multiplying or being added or subtracted to the absolute value? Yes. This one. So that means we need to subtract 5, subtract 5. We're left with absolute value 2x minus 8 equals to 8. Since there is nothing else outside the absolute value, at that point we need to write two equations. One negative 8 and everything inside of the absolute value, and one positive 8, and everything in, out inside the absolute value. And then at that point, we need to solve. So this one is add 8, add 8, 2x equals 0, divide by 2, x equals 0. This one, add 8, add 8. 2x equals 16, divide by 2, x equals 8. So check this out. For this one, when you get to that point, you need to write your solution set. Solution set is 0, comma, 8. Pay attention, please. This is the part uh, a lot of you miss. A lot of you miss writing your solution set. The second part, we need to graph. So my solutions are 0 and 8. That means we need to plot our point 0 and our point 8. And now we're done. So once again, the work, solution set, and the graph. Three different things you need to do on this one. Work, solution set, and graph. Have we got it? Okay. Move on. Let's go to number. Actually, let's do another one of these. Yes. Yes. Label this one. <coughs> example 22Q. Solving graph. We got absolute value 7x minus 7. Close the absolute value plus 8 equals 14. Go. Okay, let's see what we got. Is there anything outside the absolute value? Yes, the plus 8. Subtract 8 to each side. This becomes absolute value 7x minus 7 equals 6. So at that point, we write our two equations. One for my negative 6, 7x minus 7 and one for my positive 6, 7x minus 7. So let's solve. Plus 7 plus 7, 7x equals 1, divide by 7, divide by 7, x equals 1, 7. The next one, plus 7 plus 7, 7x equals 13, divide by 7, x equals 1 and 6 sevenths. Am I done? No. So the solution set, nice and pretty like mine, 1 7 and 1 and 6 sevenths. So let's see, 1 7 is not even 1, is that correct? And it's barely leaving 7, so this one, watch. This 1 7th is about right there. Very close to 0. And then we got 1 and 6 7, that's almost close to 2. So it's very close to 2, right there. And we're done. And if you got that by yourself. Okay, good. Let's move on. 
Number 23, Michael Jordan. Here we go. A rental car agency charges $15 per day plus 12 cents per mile. The other one charges 21 per day plus 9 cents per mile to rent the same car. And then the question is, question is, how many miles per day will have to be driven for the cost of the car for the first agency to equal the cost of the car of the second agency? So how many agencies are we talking about? Two. So you draw two lines down. One, two, one across. Label this one A, this one B, and right here we're going to write total. So, let's write our first equation. Our first equation, I'm going to take from the first information that they give us. How much do they charge right off the bat? $15 per day. So right away we put plus 15. How much do they charge per mile? 12 cents. Do we know how many miles they're going to drive? No. So that means 0.12x. Second agency, they charge $21 per day, 9 cents per minute. So what would be my equation? 0.09x plus 21. Now, make a note on this one if you want. Put a little asterisk or whatever the case. Some of you last time, instead of writing like this, 0 0.09 or 0 0.05 or 0 0.07, you wrote 0 0.7, 0 0.5 or whatever the case and that's why you got it wrong. Because if I write 0 0.9, that's 90 cents. If I write 0 0.5, that's 50 cents. So make sure when it says 9 cents or anything less than 10, you put a zero in front of that number and then the decimal. Does that make sense? So make a note for that. So, they want us to find out when this one equals to this one. So let's write it out. This one, 0.12x plus 15, equal to 0.09x plus 21. Do we know how to solve those kind of equations? Yes. Let's draw our line down the equal sign. What is the smallest variable? 0.09, so we subtract 0.09x, subtract 0.09x, we're left with 0.06x plus 15 equals 21. Let's see, finish it off. I'll give you a little bit of time to see what you get. It's 0 0.03, my bad. Thank you, uh, Peyton. 0 0.03, I did that to see if you were paying attention. So, Let's see, I need to leave the x by itself, so I subtract 15 from each side. We're left with 0.03x equals 6, divide by 0 0.03, divide by 0 0.03, x equals, let's see, I need to get rid of the decimal, I move it twice, that means I have two zeros here. So what is 600 divided by 3? 200 miles. Well, so what would be a statement for this? Marissa, what would be a statement? You ever hear that? I, I couldn't, but it, it said something like this. The two agencies needed to drive 200 miles to be equal in cost. 
10 cubed. Pretty simple? Yeah, right? Yes. Yes, you do need the statement. This is the point. Did I make my point? <laughs> Sabatore, I see you. All right, here we go, number 22. Oh, 24, my bad. Here we go. It says, find three consecutive integers such that three times the greatest integer is two less than four times the least integer. So how many integers are they talking about? Three. So you draw three lines down. One, two, three. One across. Label that, please. This is one, two, three. Total. Too much talking, guys. Yes. Yeah, I know. This is three different things, so you add one more. So, since we don't know what the first integer is, we're going to label this x. Therefore, what would be this next one? x plus 1. What would be the next one? x plus 2. All right, here we go. So, now that we have our labels, let's find out what it says again. Here it goes. It says, such that three times the greatest integer. Which one of these is the greatest integer? X plus 2. So it, what, how can we write three times that? Three parentheses X plus 2. Does that make sense? Yes? And then it says, is is two less than four times the least is two less than four times the least which is the least one of these x four times that is four x follow that please and answer the question go you should have distribute first that is three x plus 6 equals 4x minus 2. Well, that's an ugly 2. There it is. All variables to one side, that means I subtract 3x, subtract 3x. 6 equals x minus 2. Add 2, add 2. 8 equals x. We're done solving for x, but did we answer the question? It says, find three consecutive integers. What are they? 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. 8 plus 2 is 10. Then you write the three consecutive integers are 8, 9, 10. 10 cubed. Sure. Okay, let's do another one of these. Example 24Q. Thank you for requesting it, uh, Preston. Here we go. Write this down. Find three consecutive integers such that three times the greatest integer is eight less than four times the least integer. So set it up please. Three consecutive integers and now this is the information that they give us. Three times the greatest integer is eight less than four times the least integer. Go. Okay, here goes the process. Check this out guys. For integers, this does not change. If it says three integers, that means one, two, three, one across, one, two, three, total, and therefore x, x plus one, x plus two. 
Are we there so far? That doesn't change. Next, it says, such that three times the greatest integer, here's the greatest integer, so it's three times x plus two, is eight less, so you put minus eight, four times the least integer. The least integer is this one right here. So how can we write four times that? Four x. Everybody there? Distribute and solve. This is, oh, yes, question. So the question was, um, how do we start labeling our numbers? So let me show you that. It says, three times the greatest integer. So first of all, we know that this is the lowest integer because if I was to write integers in a row like this, let's say one, two, and three, which is the smallest integer? One. Which is the greatest integer? Three. But since we didn't label it with numbers, we label it with variables, the smallest is x, the greatest is x plus two. Are we there so far? It says three times the greatest integer. So which of these three is the greatest? X plus two. If it says three times, that means we put three parentheses and the greatest integer. Are we there so far? From there is, is, that's equal. Then it says four times the least integer. That means four x. And then it says eight less, and that's how we get that. Yeah? And then from there we just saw. 3x plus 6 equals 4x minus 8 minus 3x minus 3x. Therefore, we're left with 6 equals x minus 8 plus 8 plus 8. 14 equals x. So what are my integers? 14, 15, and 16, and you write your statement. Yes? Anthony, you got that by yourself? Okay, good. Let's move on to number 25. Here we go. It says, solve the inequality, graph the solution, and write the solution set. Here we go. Line down the inequality symbol and let's distribute. This times this, this times this, that gives us negative 4x minus 10 greater than negative 2x plus 9. All variables to one side. What is my smallest variable? Negative 4x, so that means I add 4x. Add 4x to each side. We're left with negative 10 greater than 2x plus 9. What's my next step? Subtract 9 from both sides. We're left with negative 19 equals 2x. I'm sorry, greater than? I was testing you guys. Divide by 2. So this is negative 9.5 greater than x. Let's graph this. What's our dividing point? Negative 9.5. Where's negative 9.5? Negative 9.5 is in between the 10 and the 9. However, does it include the point? No. So it's an open point. And now, let's test a number to see what makes this true. I'm going to test uh, a number from this side. I'm going to test one. I'm going to test this one. Is negative 9.5 greater than 1? No. If it doesn't work, that means it's not going to be shaded this way. Which way is it going to be shaded? The other way. That means our solutions are all the way to the left. Careful with these because of the graphing going to make you uh, think about the direction.
That's where I'm going. Everybody there so far? So, my solution set. Solution set X such that and we write our, our inequality. We can write negative 9.5 is greater than x. So did we do all three things? Did we solve? Yes. Did we graph? Yes. And did we write our solution set? Yes. Let's move on. Number 26. This is very similar, but now this one, we're going to end up with two inequalities. Here we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Here it goes. So let's solve this. Line down the inequality symbol, and let's see. <coughs> is there anything outside the absolute value? Yes, there's negative 2, which is multiplying and negative 1 which is being added or subtracted. Where do I start? The subtraction. So what is the inverse of subtraction? Add 1, add 1. This cancels, bring down the negative 2 times the absolute value x minus 8 less than negative 6. Now we get rid of the negative 2. If it's multiplying, we need to divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. We're left with absolute value x minus 8. And didn't we just divide by a negative? What happens to the symbol? It flips. Don't forget that. Make sure you make a note of it for yourself. So this becomes a positive 3. Are we there so far? So, at that point, we're going to write two inequalities. Check this out. One negative. So that means the 3 is going to become a negative 3. So if this becomes a negative 3, what happens to the inequality symbol? It switches. So we get write x minus 8. Don't forget that. Then we're going to write a positive 1 on this side. That one stays the same, including whatever is inside stays the same. Let's solve plus 8 plus 8. This is x less than 5. Plus 8 plus 8. x is greater than 11. So, let's graph these. I'm going to start with the red one. x is less than 5. Where's 5 at? Right here. Does it include the point? No, it's open point. And let's read it. X is less than 5. So I'm going to substitute this value. Let's see. Is 4 less than 5? Yes. Yeah, so that means this one's going in that direction. Okay. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to graph the next one. X is greater than 11. Does it include the point? No. And I'm going to test, uh, let's test 12. Is 12 greater than 11? Yes. yes, that means this is going to go that direction. So what kind of inequality is this? An or. So let's write our solution set. Solution set of x such that and for this one, you just write your two inequalities. What was the first one? x less than 5 or x greater than 11. And that's how you write your solution set. So far, look good? Let's move on number 27. Give the domain and range of the relation and tell whether the relation is a function. Here we go. Look up, please. So first of all, let's give the domain and range. So I'm going to write down here, look up, domain, and I'm going to write my solution set. So what they're asking, look up please, 
they're asking what x values are being used to create this relation. So let's see. Start on the left side or the or the negative side. Where does this start at? What x value? Negative, negative three. If you don't see it, make sure you you do something like this so you can see where it starts. Where does it end? At one. So therefore, you're going to write negative three, one. And in between is less than or equal to x and less than or equal to 1. That's the domain. That's the domain. Now we need to find the what? Range. So we found the y value, I mean the x value, now we need to find the y values. So here's my y. What is the first negative number that is being used for this graph? negative 2, watch, it starts about right there. And where does it end? Let's see, at about positive 2. So it goes from negative 2 to positive 2, and it's less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 2. So far is it good? So, we're done with the first part. But the second part they're asking us to answer, is this a a relate is this relation a function? So this is how we test it. Look up, please. Let me move this out of the way. To test it, we get our vertical line test, like this. And then we're going to scan it from left to right. And if it touches at two parts of that graph, then it's not a function. Did it touch at two points? About there? Yes, yes, therefore it's not a function. So you just write not a function. Yes? Okay. I want you to do another one. Don't copy the graph, just find me the domain and range and tell me if it's a function. Oh, sorry. Let me go back. Yes. Okay, let me zoom in. Write the domain and range, and then tell me if that's a function. Do that by yourself. Go. Okay, let's see. Domain. Should have written, let's see, from negative 3 to 3, so it's negative 3 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. Hence, if you got that. Range. The range is from negative 2 to 2, so it's negative 2 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 2. And if you got that, that is correct. And from there, is this a function? Let's check it. If this touches at two parts, it is not. And therefore, it touches here and it touches here. This is not a function. And if you got that by yourself. Okay, good. Does everyone understand the functions? Okay, let's move on. Number 28. It says, determine a relationship between x and y and write an equation. Now, I gave you plenty of practice with this on the warm-ups. Is that correct? So, this is what you need to do. Look up. You write y equals blank x blank. And ask the question. Don't say it out loud if you see it. What's happening to x to get y? What's happening to x to get y? I said, don't say it out loud. Wow. Wow. What's happening to X to get Y? Tell your neighbor, please. So let's see. Evelyn, what's happening to X? It's multiplying by 2, so the 2 goes here, 2 times X, and you write your equation, Y equals 2X. And if you got that. Okay, let's do another one of these. Copy this one. 28Q.
Oh, that's too easy. Yes, it is. Yes. Copy this one. Example 28Q. Go. See if you can do that one by yourself. Okay, what's happening to X to get Y? What's happening to X to get Y? What's happening to X to get Y? So, what's our equation, Tony? Y equals X plus 3. Hands if you got that. That is correct. Okay, let's move on. Number 29. It says, for f of x equals negative 8x plus 2, find f of x when x is negative 4. Focus, please. So for this one, all they're saying, look up, please, is that for every x that you see, you're going to substitute negative 4 and simplify. So look up, please. So right away, you get your function, and you're going to write f of negative 4. So this is just saying I'm working on negative 4. Does that make sense? It's a function of negative 4, so this is negative 8. And instead of x, what goes in for x? Negative 4 plus 2. So, what is negative 8 times negative 4? 32 plus 2. You bring down the f of negative 4 because we're still working on f of negative 4. So what is 32 plus 2? 34, so this is f of negative 4. And we're done. Everybody with me? Okay, so now I want you to find me f of the same function, but when x is 5. Do that, please. You can do it right there on the side if you want. That's fine. It fits in there. Okay, let's see. First thing we did, we rewrote this, so we wrote f of 5. Is that correct? Equals to negative 8 times 5 plus 2. What does this mean? That we're working on that number, right? So therefore, f of 5 is negative 40 plus 2. F of 5 is negative 38. Hands if you got that by yourself. Bam! Go to number 30. Number 30. Hold on, hold on. Number 30 says, without graphing, David, tell whether the point 424 is on the graph y equals 5x plus 4. So for this one, look up please. Right away, label this as x, this is y. And you need to substitute these in here. So what is my y value? 24 equals to 5 times what is x? 4 plus 4. So what is 5 times 4? 20 plus 4. What is 20 plus 4? 24 equals to 24. Is that true? And you write yes on the graph. Let's do another one of these. On your scratch paper, I want you to write 30Q. Example 30Q. On your scratch paper, Ernesto, 30Q. Copy this one. Tell whether the point 951 is on the graph y equals 5x plus 6. Do that one by yourself. Go. 
So we found that 951 was on the graph, but right now we're checking negative 12, comma 50, negative 50 to see if that's on the graph. Okay, let's see. X, Y. So this is negative 50 equals 5 times negative 12 plus 6. Negative 50 equals negative 60 plus 6. Negative 50 equals negative 54. Is this true? No, so therefore this is not on the graph. Everybody understand? Okay, let's move on. Number 31. Yes. Yes. Okay, here we go. Number 31. It says, write 3y equals 35, I mean, 3y equals 30x plus 5 in standard form, and give the values of a, b, a, b, and c, and describe the graph. So, first of all, it's asking us to do three different things. Number one, write, write it in standard form. Number two, they want us to identify a, b, and c. And number three, they want us to identify the graph. That means for the graph, we need to write it in slope, intercept, form. All right, so with that said, standard form. Standard form needs to look like this. Write it right above that. It needs to look like AX plus BY equals C. All right, here you go. Look up, please. So, we need to make this one look like this, yes? So, what do you notice on this one? That the X and the Y are on the same side of the equation. So, look at this equation. We need to bring the X to the other side. Is that correct? So, I need to subtract 3X, subtract 3X. We're left with negative 3x plus 3y equals 5. So now, does that look like this? Yes. Therefore, what is a? Negative 3. What is d? Positive 3. And what is c? 5. So we're done with one part, with two parts. Now they need us to describe it. That means we need to solve this for y. So I'm going to rewrite the original right here. And we need to solve for y. So what do I do? Divide by 3. y equals 1 over 1x. One plus, what is 5 divided by 3? 1 and 2 thirds, or 1.6 bar. So, let's describe this. Look up, please. What kind of slope is this? What kind of slope is it? I'll stop right there. Here we go. What kind of slope is this? There's only four types. Positive, negative, undefined, or zero. This is a positive slope. Isn't it a positive number? Yes. So the first thing we're going to describe, we're going to say positive slope, comma, 
So the line is going up. What is the second piece of information that they give them that equation? The y-intercept. So what, do, what would we say? The line crosses the y-axis at 1.6. And that's it. One more of these? Yes, on your scratch paper. Here we go. Example 31Q. Copy that equation. 4y equals 5x plus 2. I want you to write in standard form. Identify A, B, and C, and then I want you to describe that line. Go. See, we need to write in standard form. Minus 5x, minus 5x. We're left with negative 5x plus 4y equals 2. So we need to identify a, b, and c. Now it's in a standard form. ax plus by equals c. Yes. So what is a? a equals negative 5. What is b? B equals 4, and C equals 2. So we're done with two pieces now. Now we just need to take the original one. 4Y equals 5X plus 2, and solve for Y. Y equals, what is my slope? 5 over 4X plus one half or point five. So five divided by four is five over four x. Two divided by four is two fourths, which is one half. So what would be the first description? Noemi. The slope? What kind of slope? It's a positive slope. So then you write positive slope, the line is going up. And then what else, Eduardo? And the line crosses the, the y-axis at one half. Does that make sense? All right, let's move on. Number 32. Now, if if you don't get this one, I'm going to send uh, Lauren G slapping people around. My goodness. All right, here we go. My bad, no, no slapping people. Here we go. It says, find the slope of the line that contains negative 9, negative 8, and 8, negative 6. So, by now, we should know the formula. M equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Is that correct? Yes. The second thing that you should have done is this. A fraction bar with a subtraction and subtraction. Don't forget those or you're going to make a mistake. From there, let's label our point. This is x sub 1, y sub 1 x sub 2, y sub 2. Bless you. So let's start with the y's in the numerator. What is y sub 2? Negative 6. It goes right there. From there, y sub 1. What is y sub 1? Negative 8. Let's go with the x. x sub 2. What is x sub 2? 8. And what is x sub 1? negative 9. So, what is negative times a negative right here? It's a positive, same right here. So this is 2 over 17. So my slope is 
2 over 17. Hands if you got that by yourself. Okay. Let's move on. This one should be automatic by now, right? Okay. Number 33. Here we go. 33. We got, it says, the equation of four lines are given. Identify which lines are parallel. Whenever you see the word parallel, I want you to do this. Look up, please. Put a box and write same M different B. So you never what that means. Same slope, different y-intercept. Are we there? All right. So, in order to identify that of each equation, they need to be solved for y. Look up, please. Is the first one in slope-intercept form? Yes. Is the second one? No. So, let's do this one. We're going to distribute the negative 3, I mean, the negative 1 third in there. So... I end up with y minus 4, which is this part, equals negative 1 third times x, that's negative 1 third x. Negative 1 third times negative 1, that's positive 1 third. Are we there so far? Yeah. From there, add 4, add 4, we end up with y equals negative 1 third x plus four and one-third. Is it in slope-intercept form now? Yes. Let's go on to the next one. I'm going to cross this one out since I already transformed it. Is this one in slope-intercept form? Yes. How about this one? No. So we need to get rid of the x. So that means I subtract x, subtract x. We're left with negative one-third y equals negative x minus 7. So, I'm not done because I have a fraction multiplying the y. How can we cancel or get rid of that fraction? Multiply times the reciprocal. The reciprocal is negative 3 over 1. And whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. Multiply times negative 3 over 1. So this is y equals negative 3 times negative x, that's positive 3x. Negative 3 times negative 7, that's positive 21. I don't write the 1 because it stays the same, right? So, we're done with this one. Let's look at the first one. What is my slope? 3 over 1 or 3? Is there another equation with 3 over 1? Yes, the last one. Do they have different y-intercepts? Yes, yeah, so then you're going to write line 1 is parallel to line 4, and we're done. Yes. Um, I don't know, I'll think about that. And let's check the other two. What is the slope of the second one? Negative one-third. And the third one, negative three. So they're not parallel. That's why the only ones are this one and that. Everybody got it? Okay. Let's go to number 34. Yeah. Our favorite. Yay. It says... Graph three different ways. Look up, please. By destiny. Everybody say by destiny. <laughs> All right, here we go. Look up, please. So, when you get to this one, it says graph the equation 2y minus 4x equals negative 12 three different ways. When they're asking us to graph it three different ways, the first one that I want you to label is this one. 
is this one, oh sorry, is this one, and you're going to label this table, table, and you're going to write x, y, and tell your neighbor the domain that you're going to use. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. That should be automatic by now. Okay? However, we need to change this equation first. Look up, please. So I'm going to go to the middle graph and I'm going to label this one slope intercept form. And I'm going to rewrite this equation. 2y minus 4x equals negative 12. So, I'm going to zoom in. And we need to solve this one for y. Is that correct? So what do I do first? Add 4x. Add 4x. We're left with 2y equals 4x minus 12. At the end, we divide by 2, divide by 2. y equals 2x, and then minus 6. Are we there so far? So now, do we have enough information to graph this one in slope-intercept form? Yes. Let's graph it. First thing we do, we circle our y-intercept, which is? negative 6, you plot your point because that's what we need to start. And what is our slope? Our slope is 2 up and 1 to the right. So we go 1, 2, 1 to the right. Plot your point, let's do it again. 1, 2, 1 to the right. 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 And then you graph your line. Make sure it goes through those points, nice and straight like mine. Maybe not as pretty, but so-so. There it is. So we're done with that one. Now check this out. I'm going to zoom out so you guys can see where we're at. So we're done with the slope intercept form, but now we have an equation that we can use for our table. So watch. I'm going to use this equation. I'm going to write it here. Y equals 2X minus 6. I'm going to write it again, y equals 2, but I'm going to open up parentheses for the, six, for the x. So, what is the first value that I'm going to substitute into my equation? Negative 2. That goes in here. So what is 2 times negative 2? Negative 4 minus 6, what is that? Negative 10. That goes right there. Let's do it again. Y equals 2, open parentheses, minus 6. My next value is what? Negative 1. What is 2 times negative 1? Negative 2 minus 6, that's negative 8. That goes here. And do you guys see the pattern for me? What would be our next number? Negative 4 and negative 2. Let's graph those. Here we go. Negative 2, 10 is way down here. I can't fit that. I'm going to go to my next one. Negative 1, negative 8. Negative 1, negative 8 is about right there. 0, negative 6. 0, negative 6. 1, negative 4. 1, negative 4. And 2, negative 2, which is right there. Let's graph our line. Does it look similar to the other one? Yes, because it's the same equation. Focus, please. Focus. Are we there so far? So we're done with the table. We're done with slope intercept form. What is our third way? Using intercept. So label the third one in 
intercepts. And we're going to use the original equation. What was the original equation? 2y minus 4x equals negative 12. 2y minus what? Minus 4x equals negative 12. Check this out. Everybody look up. Instead of doing the substitution for 0, I'm going to give you an easier uh, way of doing this one. Watch. If I was to cover the y, I end up with negative 4x equals 12. Is that correct? So I'm going to write that over here, negative 4x equals negative 12. And if I was to cover the x value, what do you see? The y. So that means I'm going to write 2y equals negative 12. Do you guys see what I did there? And then you just solve for each and you plot your points in your graph. So let's do that. Let's solve for the y. Divide by 2, y equals negative 6. Divide by negative 4, x equals 3. So let's plot those points. y negative 6 is right here. x 3 is about right there. And our graph should go through those two points. Make sure you extend it as much as you can. And let me zoom out to see if all three graphs look the same. Yes. Check your graph to see if they look the same. Are we doing? Yes. And do we do another one of these? <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go over number 35 and last one. Yeah. All right, here we go. So, once again, remember for this one, look up please. For this one, we need to first write an equation. Even though it doesn't say it, we need to write an equation. So for this one we start with slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. What information do we need from here? I'm going to box it. This one, we need a slope. What is our slope that they give us? Slope is 1. And we need our y-intercept. And what is our y-intercept? We don't have one. We don't have one. But what we do have is an x value and a y value. So pay attention to this one. So y is 0. x is negative 3. What other information do they give us? The slope is 1. And that's it, right? I bring the equal sign down, I bring the plus b. So that means out of all this, the only thing that we don't have a value for is b. Is that correct? So let's solve for b. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Bring down the plus b equal to 0. Am I done solving for b? No, I need to add 3, add 3. So therefore, b is equal to positive 3. So therefore, my b value is positive 3. Can I write an equation given those two values? Yes. So it's y equals 1 over 1x one plus 3. And now that I have that, now I can graph my line. So here we go. Circle your 3, plot your point, and use the slope 1 up, 1 to the right, 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 and you graph your line. Are we doing? Okay, let's do one more of these. One more of these.
about this one. Focus please, there it is. Slope is negative 1 and the point is negative 3, negative 6. Slope is negative 1 and the point is negative 3, negative 6. Copy that. I want you to write your equation and then to graph it. Go. So the given values is the slope is negative 1, x and y are there, so here we go. Negative 6 equals negative 1 times negative 3 plus b. Are we there so far? This becomes negative 6 equals 3 plus b. Subtract 3, subtract 3, negative 9 equals b. Therefore, my equation is y equals negative 1 over 1x minus 9. Hands if you got that. Now, our graph doesn't really hold negative 9, but if it did, it would be down here, 1 down, 1 to the right. One down, one to the right, one down, one to the right. And our equation, I mean our line should go through those two points. Can I do another one? Example 35, super Q, and everybody say thank you, Juliana. <laughs> Copy this one. Rhyming an equation uh, of a line that has slope of 2 and that contains the point negative 6, negative 6, and see if you can graph that. Go. So the equation for that line was y equals 2 over 1x plus 6. That is correct. All right, before we leave, have a seat, please. Uh, let me close my video really quick. Uh, this is the end of the second part of Communicative Test number three, or party number three, study guide, and hope you guys enjoyed it. Bye.